Hi, I'm Peggy Kelly and this is Good Morning Santa Paula. It's March 25th and we're catching up with our city leaders and uh, talking about what's going on now during this COVID-19 epidemic, pandemic, whatever you want to call it, but we're all adhering or trying to adhere to the rules. I've got, uh, the, today we've got starting down there, we've got Chief Ish Kadero is with us today. Once again, we have Mayor Rick Ariza. We've got City Manager, Dan Singer, and we've got Superintendent of Schools, uh, Unified School District, Dr. Ed Cora. So what I would like to start with is I would like maybe to Rick just go ahead and offer us a little, a little update on, on maybe what's been happening in general as far as dealing with the pandemic. Well, in the city of Santa Paula, we're following the directives of the county health director. So we are uh, still in closed city offices mm -hmm. and Dan will discuss that. But city council, we have, um, we are getting ready to have our first city council, so we'll be following the directives. We're going to use Zoom, so people, if you see something on the agenda and you want to discuss it, you can call in and uh, we'll be able to listen to your questions. As far as the local uh, businesses, we uh, are following the directives of county and state, and we have also ratified the emergency status, so that's continuing on. Um, Dan will talk a little bit more about what the city services, we will be talking about some of the city services uh, on our next council meeting, which is April 1st, I believe, so uh, next week. Uh, but that's what's going on today, uh, and everything changes day to day, so uh, what you're going to hear today may change by a couple days from now. Yeah, we're changing an hour. Yeah, that's, that's possible too. Yeah, excuse me, I had to turn off my cell phone. I apologize for that. But but anyway, so Dan, you've been uh, obviously been very, very busy. Perhaps you want to discuss the fact that City Hall is closed, but it's still open, as it were, because we're still in business. Any way you cut it, we're still in business. That's right, and we're doing everything we can to keep all of our core services continuing. For example, for permits and uh, construction and, and those types of projects, our planning and uh, permitting and building and safety counter is closed, but it is by appointment. So we do encourage people to reach out if they have needs. Um, the same with our utilities. Uh, we're taking phone calls if people have questions about where to pay their bill. We have a drop box outside. Uh, we'll email receipts to folks. So we're, we're keeping our core services open. The, uh, the hard part is you know, trying to make sure we serve all the public as best we can. So if, if, if you're not feeling served by us, please let us know. Um, we've put a tremendous amount of information on our website about the virus and about the need to respond. Right, wonderful links. Yeah. A lot um, of links. In English and Spanish, that's uh, www.spcity.org. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and have uh, done what we can to try and uh, get the word out about these changes in, in services. The one thing that's encouraging is that our recreation folks who have had to cancel classes and things like that mm -hmm. are working with a few of our nonprofits in town to create activity kits. Oh, that's I know wonderful. we'll hear from um, Superintendent Cora in a minute about uh, work that the school district is doing to try and engage our, our kids, um, give them things to do during this time. And we're looking to do the same with seniors. Mm -hmm. And by the way, uh, Peggy, our senior meal program is still fully operational, and we're allowing people to come in on Monday through Friday, uh, 11.30 to 12.30 or 1, to come in and pick up a meal, homemade meal. Uh, Great, and you're still doing, too, of course, um, meals on wheels. Yes, so yeah. we're still doing meal deliveries. Um, we now have about 45 to 50 people coming in for mm -hmm. pickups, and they're just able to drive up not quite like McDonald's, but mm -hmm. you know they're they're able to come in and get their meal without mm -hmm. all that human contact. Absolutely. So. Now I'm I'm curious. I know that uh, the the city the city wants to uh, let the community know that they've got to be very careful with what they they flush, as it were. It's a little indelicate to discuss, but but anyway, there is a concern about people throwing things down the down the commodes. And yeah. is, I I know that there's a warning that's. Uh, They've been issued, it's just 
Could you, do you want to speak to that? Yeah, the, that? you know, the concern is, especially at this time of heightened uh, disinfecting, yes. that people are using all these wipes, they're using paper towels and to clean surfaces, to clean their hands, to clean things that they've touched. That's great. We encourage that kind of activity. Um, we just want to be sure people are putting that in the trash and not putting it down the toilet mm -hmm. uh, because uh, we will have significant problems with those thicker materials mm -hmm. if people are, are flushing them. Well, and, and not only, I mean, even things that say they're flushable aren't. That's right. That's, uh, you know, that's, plumbers have always said that that was the best thing, that, like they need the business, but that, you know, with the flushables, that just, oh, that was just great because the only thing that is flushable really is toilet paper and baby wipes and makeup removers and anything else, even facial tissues, you're not supposed to flush. And, and that's just, which I wasn't even aware about, facial tissue. So, so it just goes to show you, and if it, if it all gets down there, it, it can, and, and then they have problems with people, no grease down the toilets. I know people are trying their best to, to adjust as well as they can, but they just, just little habit things, and they just have to make sure they don't get in the habit of doing things like that. Yeah, so um, now you're, you're, and you're in constant contact with the county as far we are. as... Mm -hmm. We have uh, daily calls <coughs> seven days a week. Our police have uh, daily calls seven days a week. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I know that the superintendents are having regular calls. Um, we're really trying to not have individual cities stick out, just like the school districts, so that... Um, what people are experiencing here is the same thing they'd be experiencing right. in our neighboring communities. So while we can provide tailored services as much as possible, we're trying to follow all the same rules. And, uh, and so we're, we're not unique in that mm -hmm. way. Well, I think basically too, when it's, it's a matter of everybody's following the same rules so everybody can just keep abreast of everything that's going on without saying, well, wait a minute, what does that mean? Or what, is, what, what do you mean you've done this? So, I think that's great. The continuity is, is what really keeps keeps things running, yes. as far as I'm concerned. Now, um, Dr. Cora, I know that you were talking earlier about you're having a meeting tonight, and mm -hmm. you were going to address the uh, uh, the model you're going to use to have that meeting. So, first of all, thank you, Peggy. Thank you to the City of Santa Paula and to KDT, KDTV for giving us the opportunity to um, share some information. So we do have a board meeting this evening. It's a special board meeting. Uh, starts at 6 o'clock at Glen City School. And following the governor's um, directive, uh, we have some members on our board that uh, fall into the high um, kind of critical area. And so we will only be able to have 10 uh, folks in the room. That's five board members, myself, my assistant superintendent, mm -hmm. uh, our administrative assistant at tech, and um, also our recorder, Bob Allen. So that's, that's our 10 folks. Um, but people can watch it uh, because it's being live streamed and um, they'll be able to send um, any comments that they would like um, in advance to, um, there's an email on the board agenda, mgarcia at santapaulounified.org um, so they can go ahead and do that. And that way they can still watch and participate through the emails mm -hmm. and we'll read the emails that come in. Okay, now school's been closed, uh, all, all schools have been closed now for what, about a week and a half? Week and a half. Okay, exactly. and I know you guys have done uh, quite a bit. So, what have you done as far as, like, I know that, um, you know, delivering instruction and things like that. I know mm -hmm. that all of a sudden you started to accelerate what's going on just just today. Yeah, it's well, it's interesting because, um, you know, if anybody thinks, well, schools closed, what are they doing? <laughs> I've worked harder these this last week and a half than I think I do when students are in school and, and staff are, are working. Um, behind the scenes, there's been so much that has been going on, and uh, we have a three-phase learning program, learning plan. And of that, of the three phases, we're into phase one right now. And phase one is really having enrichment activities on our websites, mm -hmm. our website available to students. And also starting today, between 10.30 and 12.30, same time that our meals are being served, um, families were encouraged to come and pick up learning packets for grades kindergarten through eighth grade. Uh, that'll be available also tomorrow, so today and tomorrow. And some of the schools are even extending those hours to provide families an opportunity to come and pick up the learning packets. Um, the high school students, we are working right now on cleaning and disinfecting um, as many Chromebook laptop computers as we possibly can. And we're looking to distribute those to the high school seniors beginning on Friday 
So we're working on, again, there's so much planning that has to go. Now, are, taking excuse us me, are these, are these to every senior or just seniors that might not have a? We're starting with seniors who don't have one. Okay. Yes, yeah, so don't have one. Maybe they all had to have the same Because we, we don't have a device for every single student. Right. So we're hoping that those, who, and our teachers are doing a great job of making phone calls, making mm -hmm. connections on the, the parents, and finding out who does, who doesn't. So yes, yeah, mm -hmm. we don't have enough for everyone. Yeah, okay. Well, I know a lot of them have it, so it's yeah. basically to get it to the ones that, that don't have it at this point. So that's that's really good. Now, what's in the home learning package that you've been sending home? We have basically um, basic fundamental math and language arts skills again in Richmond just to keep them up as opposed to not having anything at all. Right. So they can either go online or use a learning packet or both. And it's really we need the support of, of the parents. And we've all been saying we're all in this together. It can't be, well, the school's going to take care of it. We'll give the opportunities, but the parents really need to help out and get their child a nice, quiet place to work, set some structure in the home, give them those opportunities to keep up. Um, and uh, when we're going to come back, I don't think any of us know. As was mentioned, things change daily. You said sometimes hourly. Um, but we're just trying to keep up with giving them opportunities to continue their learning. Mm -hmm. Now also on your website, you also have like a daily schedule that families yep. can mm -hmm. follow that's actually very practical. I'm going to try to follow it myself, <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, but but I was quite impressed at that daily yeah. schedule and, and it really is a good guide for parents to follow to, you know, because there's a lot of parents that are home now, like it or not, yeah. you know, I mean, and, and, and bless their hearts too. But now um, you also have, you also going to have um, to contact from the the teachers are going to be calling or emailing all the students. That is part of phase mm -hmm. one, and um, you know, teachers did a great job. Of, as a matter of fact, we checked with, I'm meeting with uh, principals every day, mm -hmm. and we're meeting by f conference call. And so we're touching base and finding out how is everything going. And today was the first day that teachers were communicating with, with parents and just reaching out, making mm -hmm. that connection with them, mm -hmm. and also doing part of the technology survey. Do you have a device, does your uh, son or daughter have a device at home? Do they have internet access? So we're gathering all this information as we get ready to roll out the Chromebooks to our seniors and then the juniors, sophomores, and freshmen. Mm -hmm. and, and so are they calling, are they, uh, so they're doing, are they also calling the elementary school students on? Yes, uh -huh. kindergarten all the way through. Oh, okay. And there's actually a program called Jive that they can use on their district provided laptop. It's like using your phone, but you're using it on your laptop and it connects to your classroom phone. Oh, so they're not, okay. they don't have to use their own cellular device, they don't have to sure. use their data, it's just all connecting through the school district. Oh, that's wonderful, because I'm sure that's going to mean an awful lot to a lot of those kids. Because, you know, everybody, especially in elementary school, you know, they all love their teachers, so I'm sure that's going to boost their morale. Yeah. And that's an issue, too, that, you know, you, you definitely want to uh, uh, keep, keep the emotional well-being also of students and how, how, how is that fit into this point of what, what the school district is doing? Is it just a matter of getting them on the right track, giving them encouragement? We're doing a little bit of combination of all mm -hmm. of those connections through the phone calls that, um, that teachers are making. That's part of what we're asking for, making those connections with students. And you know, we don't know how students are taking all of this. We don't, yeah. we may not know until they come back. We mm -hmm. don't know if they're taking it okay, if it's registering with them if it's affecting them negatively, yes. that's part of what the parents do at home, just kind of gauge how they're doing. And again, we won't know until we're gonna learn a lot from this whole experience. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Anything else? Um, I just wanna pass out a big um, kudos to all of our administrative staff mm -hmm. for the planning, our teachers for making the phone calls and helping get the packets out, mm -hmm. our classified, everybody's working. Mm -hmm. The community may not know that, but they're all working from different yes. locations. Yes, and, and, and so much of our population is now, they're working from home, they're working from wherever, or they're just skeleton crews on the premises, and then the rest are working from home. Exactly. And they deserve a lot of credit. Yes, they so do. As does our city and our police department, who, who actually is probably out more than anybody else when you get right down to it. So, so Chief, what any what's different? What's, what's different? I know they've got the... The rules now about uh, congregating, about how many people you can have in a situation, what businesses can be open, what businesses can't be open. I'm also a little concerned about, you know, your officer's personal safety as far as being exposed to people that might have the coronavirus. So wh where should we start? Well, I'll start by uh, 
telling you that the early on when the state of emergency orders came down, um, we uh, worked on uh, implementing a plan of uh, emergency operations. Mm -hmm. uh, there's four levels. Uh, right now we're currently in level two, which means that we've increased our staffing levels, uh, almost double the staffing levels. So there's overtime involved? No, so. no. Luckily we have our school, two school resource officers oh, that's reassigned right. the patrol. Mm -hmm. And then we have our uh, traffic uh, right. motor officer also mm -hmm. assigned to patrol mm -hmm. and traffic as good. needed. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're good at that. We've identified non-essential employees, which most most of our employees are not. Yeah. But um, uh, we have them uh, alternating on some of their schedules so they don't uh, have work. to share office space. Exactly. Um, so and, and like Mr. Singer said, we're in constant communication with the county, ELC, and other law enforcement agencies for any updates, any sharing of information as to how they're handling things and uh, their staffing levels, deployment levels, and so forth. Uh, we're we're uh, up to date on that. Um, I think uh, Assistant Chief Barner, who drew up this uh, emergency plan, um, is working really well because other agencies are calling him for the plan. Right. So. Did a really good job on that. Um, so far, our officers do have uh, safety equipment with them. Uh, they're given a, a kit, so to speak. Um, so you know they have to be careful. Uh, and so now, when you say a kit, do they have like hand sanitizer? Hand sanitizers, a uh, uh, mask, mm -hmm. uh, goggles, and I believe uh, a suit if needed. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure on that, but um, that would be nice if we did. Right. But. Um, so they're, they're very careful. Um, they're being um, constantly updated as things change. Um, the city is divided in three beats, uh, one officer per beat. And then we have the uh, roving officers who are focusing mainly on the shopping areas, downtown, uh, shopping center, parks, and schools to make sure that if people are congregating, specifically at the parks and schools, that they make contact with them, they advise them of the, the new orders in place. And so far, everybody's been very cooperative mm -hmm. and very praiseful of the officers doing what mm -hmm. they're doing. I'm sure. Um, so we haven't had any issues along those lines. Mm -hmm. um, so we're dealing with it day by day. Uh, we are ready to um, implement the third level of the emergency status if needed and up to the fourth level. Uh, we've prepared for that. Mm -hmm. uh, we have that. What would trigger place. that? Uh, that could trigger uh, a, a more exposure outbreak, mm -hmm. um, uh, more con contaminants, or uh, uh, other uh, like unruly crowds. Mm -hmm. uh, anything that that would be considered more of, a, of an emergency than we have now. I see. Absolutely. So as long as we've got we've got two cases now, as as we speak, I haven't received the update date yesterday it's in still, Santa Paula. Still two. Still two. So we've got 39 cases in Ventura County and two cases in Santa Paula, and uh, and you know, and that's held for a few days now. So and of course, the best way to stop spreading it is not to have contact with anybody. As sad as it is, you know, if you love somebody, stay away from them. You know, that's basically it's it's. We just have to keep our distance, and you'll see we're all six feet, six feet apart. We're even farther apart. What can I say? But we're all together, and we're all into this together. But now, have you had many complaints about like maybe price gouging or businesses being open? Or I'm now price gouging. They're supposed to call the district attorney's office. We've had a couple of calls mm -hmm. that I know of price gouging, mm -hmm. but one was unfounded because. Uh, the store owner was selling a case of water for fifteen dollars, but it was the liter bottle in a case. Oh, okay. So it was, yes. a, so it was a misunderstanding. Yes. yes. And uh, the other one was um, not exactly sure what it was, but it was referred to the district attorney's office. Mm -hmm. um, complaints about people, businesses. We've had a few, specifically salons. Our officers have made contact with the salon employees or owners and advised them of the order in place, and so far they've cooperated, mm -hmm. as well as people in the parks. Absolutely. Now, what um, has have, do you are you getting more calls, less calls? Because you know it's the old adage that when during the summer usually crime goes up because our teenagers have a tendency to get in a little bit more trouble sometimes, and now they're out of school. 
And uh, do you think your, your calls have increased? Or? Uh, there's a couple areas that they have increased, mm -hmm. uh, specifically graffiti, mm -hmm. but our graffiti abatement is on it. Um, and over the weekend, our increase in family disturbances mm -hmm. or, or calls for family disturbances increased slightly. Um, not uh, major cases, but just sure. disturbances. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think everybody's disturbed in their own way, and, you know, it's very stressful yes. to, you know, to, to go through this just to begin with, and then it's just hard to be cooped up, and, and it's it's too bad, and everybody, and it's scary. You know, let's let's be honest, it's, it's scary out there. Does anybody have anything they'd like to add before we start wrapping this up? If, if I can say one more thing, I think the city falls along the lines, so I wrote a couple words, key words down, that we fall under the definition of essential functions. Mm -hmm. And so when we looked up, when the order was everybody stay home and, and say, it said other than those with essential functions, I had to go, I had to look it up. So who does that fall under? Mm -hmm. And so education falls under, I guess our job is to continue to educate and feed our students. So and I'm sure the city is, you know, many essential functions. So those are the key words. And what, if people are wondering, why are some open? Why, is, yes, why aren't true. some? It's essential mm -hmm. functions that's defined by the state of mm -hmm. California. Mm -hmm. And people are actually, some are taking advantage, and, and as they should at this point, get your car worked on. Mechanics are open. That's an essential function. And if, you know, a lot of people sometimes they say, I don't have time to get my car worked on. I have to work. Take your car in. Talk, call first. Um, you know, take, get takeout food. Just try to shop locally as much as you possibly can and, and keep everything going. And I might add, the Santa Paula Times is an essential function, and so here I am also. But it's just that you, you can't cut anything. You can't really have anybody stay home, as it were. The city ha might have some working from home, but everybody's still working. And, and thank goodness in these days of having computers and everything. And speaking of computers, you know, you watch the show on KADYTV.net, and when you do watch it, there's a little button down there that says subscribe. So if you could hit that, please, that would be wonderful because once we our numbers hit a thousand, we'll be able to go ahead and uh, bring you even more broadcasts and more interesting content. Also, I wanted to mention there's a call out right now. People need baby monitors. Our hospital. Ventura County Medical Center and Santa Paula Hospital really need baby monitors with videotape on them. So for the anticipated overflow of patients. And so if you, they'll take used baby monitors, if you'll go ahead and, and clean it off, drop it off. If it's battery operated, they'd appreciate some batteries too. If you wanna buy a video, video monitor, please do that. But they're really going to need that. They need all sorts of equipment. But baby monitors at this point is about the best we can do, just as people, I don't sew, I can't make masks, but I can buy a baby monitor. So if you need information on that, just go ahead and call the Santa Paula Times on 805-525-1890, and we'll give you the information about donating them. They will take used baby monitors. So please keep that in mind. It, it really means a lot to our population. You know, it might be your neighbor that gets sick and you don't, and you want to make sure that they have everything they need and our doctors and our nurses and our clerks and a big shout out to the people that are working in the stores now Absolutely. because they're right there in the pharmacies and they're first responders too. So, so I think we're going to wrap up for the day. I appreciate all of you and nice seeing you, you know, absence makes the heart grow fonder. So, you know, but it's nice to be able to sit down and chat and inform the community what's going on. And thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.